Russian strikes continue to bleed Ukraine for 27 days now. Destruction and devastation has taken over Ukraine's besieged southern city Kherson as residential buildings turn into ruins. Bruised and battered with rel relentless Russian attacks, civilians in Kherson are continuing to fight back, showing unprecedented resilience. Civilians in Kherson's hit streets protesting against the invaders, only to be openly fired at from the enemy troops. Kherson was one of the first cities to witness Russian troops on the streets, making a symbolic move. The Russian army had to move the Ukrainian flag from the city administration the building on 17th of March. Amid heavy resistance from the citizens as the besieged city refused to cooperate with the enemy troops. The Russian forces even lost one of their top commanders in its battle for Kherson. Kiev tells a similar tale as Kherson. Russian hellbirds have left the Ukrainian capital in shambles as Putin missiles continue to ravage civilian buildings amidst a raging war. Ukrainian President Zelensky warned that the failure of peace talks with Russia could lead to World War III. На вашій площі, на вулицях, ми були всі разом з вами, 40 мільйонів українців нашої держави, мільйони і мільйони українців у світі. Ми всі бачили, як ви стоїте, як і ви. Ми всі відчули повернути свободу на землі, де споглядаючи чумацький шлях, чумаки ходили по сіль. Звичайні українці, а зараз борці, чоловіки і жінки, які піднімаються за нашу державу повсюди. На півдні, на сході, на півночі, у центрі, на заході і за кордоном. Піднімаються так, що ворог не вірить, не вірить, що це дійсно реальність. Але ми змусимо їх повірити, змусимо запам'ятати, що до нас їм дороги немає. І ніколи не буде у Київ, який мужньо і велично стоїть над Дніпром. All right, Rajesh Pawar is now joining us for the latest on this. Rajesh, first up, disturbing images coming out of Kherson, where civilians who were protesting were attacked. What's the latest in Kherson at the moment? Kherson was the first town in Ukraine which was captured by the invading Russian forces. It is reported that protesters were protesting today against the Russian occupation in the independent square of Kherson city. When they were protesting when the peaceful march was being taken out in the Freedom Square in Kherson city, it is reported that Russian troops have fired on these protesters, peaceful protesters, and have used stun grenades to disperse them. A lot of people have been injured and there are reports that people might have even died, though none of these figures have been confirmed or verified by any of the authorities so far. But let me tell you, in Kherson, there's a large number of people who resent Russian occupation unlike what the Russians thought. They thought they'll be welcomed there because most of the people were Russian speakers in Kherson, but it appears that most of the people now, the common people who are left behind in Kherson city are not, are not very happy with this occupation by the Russian forces of this town and were protesting against this occupation in the Freedom Square today morning when they were fired upon and were dispersed by force. Rajesh, relentless Russian assault in Maripol, a uh, hospital, church, civil and apartment buildings were attacked. What's the situation now on ground over there? The UN agencies have also reported that they are unable to send any kind of humanitarian aid inside the city. Fierce fighting is reported between Russian forces and Ukrainian forces inside the city, though 90% of city seems to be under control of Russian troops. But street to street and house to house, fighting is going on in the built-up area inside the city. And this has led to great crisis, humanitarian crisis, which is unfolding there. Houses have been bombed, churches have been bombed, schools have been bombed. So the civilians in there are right now in a very difficult situation are, are, and are unable to leave the city. So it is truly a humanitarian crisis now unfolding in Maria Pol. Putin's forces continue to attack war-torn Ukraine. Six were killed on Monday after a massive explosion rocked a supermarket in the capital city, Kiev, leading to mass destruction. My colleague, Rajesh Pavar, gets you more details. There's a lull in the battle on the outskirts of Kyiv city. There has been no fighting in the northeast in the Brovary area, which witnessed a big tank anti-tank battle a few days back. And the fighting in Irpin, Bucha, Gostomol in that area has also reduced a little bit. There was little fighting, but not intense like it was a few days back. However, the city was hit by two big missiles 
Yesterday, after a gap of almost four days, one of the missiles hit a supermarket, which was on fire after that, and it is reported that six people died in that. A shopping mall on fire. Schools shelled. And multiple airstrikes. Ukraine continues to face the unsparing onslaught of Putin's war machine. With the Russian invasion of Ukraine entering its 26th day, the blood is continuing to flow on the streets of Kyiv, Mariupol and many other cities and towns spread across this big country. Several buildings in the capital city of Kyiv have suffered damage from relentless Russian bombardment in the last 24 hours. A shopping center in Kyiv was heavily damaged after a massive explosion struck the capital city by Russian shelling leading to at least six deaths. Images on your screen show the deadly aftermath of that attack. While rescuers continued to save residents, but the forces advancing from the direction of Hostomel to the northwest were repulsed by fierce Ukrainian resistance. The Russian forces have made an all out assault on the port city of Ukraine's Mariupol with multiple airstrikes. The western Ukrainian city of Rivne witnessed two massive missile strikes on a training ground captured on night camera. The port city of Odessa too has witnessed huge destruction due to shelling from Russian naval artillery. But Ukraine continues to mount a counter-attack on Russian forces. The country has refused to back down even after 26 days of constant battering. A Russian warship, for instance, was targeted by Ukrainian forces, leading to a huge explosion off the coast of Odessa. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says that direct talks with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin is the ultimate solution to end this extended battle. It is already the 25th day since the Russian military has been vainly trying to find imaginary Nazis from whom they allegedly wanted to defend our people. Just as they are vainly trying to find Ukrainians who would meet them with flowers. And most importantly, the Russian military cannot find a way home. That is why our soldiers help them with the path to God's judgment. The focus of entire military operations have shifted to a small port city of Mariupol on uh, Azov Sea coast. The city has been surrounded by the Russian troops. The Ukrainians are still resisting in some pockets in Mariupol. And it looks like more than 90% of the city is under Russian control. They have given a choice to the people there that they may leave. They may leave down, they leave, lay down their weapons and they may can leave the city. They will not be harmed. But if they do not do that, then the offensive will progress and many more casualties can be seen. With Rajesh Pavar in Kyiv, Ukraine, you report in your day. India today has access satellite images collected over the past 72 hours, which reveal continued Russian military activity in a number of key Ukrainian cities. The satellite image on your screens are from the besieged Ukrainian port city of Maripol. Images show the deployment of many Russian tanks ready for attack. Russian military vehicles are on streets of the left bank neighboring Maripol. Artillery forces remain deployed around each of these three cities, and they continue to fire on civilian areas with widespread damage seen to residential buildings buildings, industrial areas and infrastructure. Russian forces are going all out to capture the port city of Maripol and have reportedly even entered the heart of Ukraine's third largest city battered and ravaged Ukraine has refused to lay down arms and surrender. This comes after Russia hit an art school sheltering 400 people only hours before Ukrainian forces to lay down their arms and surrender. The deputy prime minister of the country responded with a clear no to Moscow's offer. Ukraine has been putting up a brave face, but on the ground things are going from bad to worse visibly. 
Russia over the weekend bombed an art school that was converted into a shelter with 400 odd civilians inside. President Zelensky referred to the strike as the work of a mass murderer, putting the global spotlight on the city of Mariupol. Hundreds of residents still remain stranded in the port city and are fast running out of food and water. With non-stop shelling, people are forced to stay underground, coming up only to bid farewell to their loved ones and burying them anywhere they find space. We have been in a basement for 11 days. This is the 25th day of war. We have been counting every one of them. We hope for the best, to live as humans. The apartment have been broken. Everything is broken. Where can we go from the basement? We are cooking at a fire. For now, we have some food and some firewood. In a week, we will have nothing, no food at all. What should we do? But why is President Putin hell-bent on grabbing Mariupol? For starters, capturing this city would mean a full 100% control of the Sea of Azov. It's also just 50 kilometers from Russia and 85 kilometers from the Donetsk and Lugansk regions, both Russian-held. Putin is doing everything he can to get Mariupol to surrender because it will help him extend dominance over Crimea. And the Russian president's Mariupol plan has led to unprecedented civilian casualties, a children's hospital bombed, mass graves in the heart of the city, and even shelters completely destroyed. With Rajesh Pavar in Kyiv, Ukraine, Bureau Report, India Today. There are two wars being fought simultaneously in Ukraine. One in the battlefield, one is the information war on social media. Ukraine's president, daily online addresses from the streets of Kiev have made him a war icon. Civilians too are posting videos of Russian bombing on residential buildings. On Our next report is going to tell you how Ukraine is dominating the information war. The Russia-Ukraine war is about to enter the fifth week. <laughs> Moscow continues to rain missiles on key Ukrainian cities. But the war-ravaged Kyiv is still holding fort. While a war is being fought on the ground with guns and tanks, another is being fought online, the social media war. As the Ukrainian president remains bunkered down in Kyiv amid fears of assassination attempts, Zelensky's daily video addresses, usually published with English subtitles, have made him a war icon. Yeah. Zelensky owes some of his success to Tesla's CEO, who agreed to the president's request to activate Starlink satellite internet in the war-torn country. Elon Musk activated satellite broadband services across Ukraine, allowing civilians an easy access to the internet. When it comes to taking on Russia, all hands are on the deck. Civilians have also joined the social media war, sharing success of their forces and exposing Russian attacks on schools and bomb shelters. Kyiv's mayor and former boxing champion Vitaly Klitschko, for instance, shared evidence shattering Russian claims of not attacking residential buildings. Klitschko did that by visiting Russian targets and giving first-hand info. Thanks to its relentless digital drive, Kyiv is getting international support. Football legend David Beckham has handed over his Instagram account to a Ukrainian doctor working in Kharkiv. Beckham has over 70 million followers on the photo sharing app. Hi everyone, so I'm handing over my social media to Irina, the head of the regional perinatal centre in Kharkiv, Ukraine. There she is working with pregnant mothers to help them give birth safely. Привет, друзья. Меня зовут Ирина. Я сегодня оккупировала инстаграм страницу Дэвида Бекхэма. В мирное время я руководитель Харьковского регионального перинатального центра и детский анестезиолог. 
actors Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher have raised over $30 million for Ukrainian refugees fleeing the country. Kunis, who was born in Ukraine, and Kutcher have expressed gratitude for the outpouring of support. We hit our goal. Over $30 million raised. Over 65,000 of you donated. We are overwhelmed with gratitude for the support. And while this is far from a solve of the problem, our collective effort will provide a softer landing for so many people as they forge ahead into their future of uncertainty. In the ever-intensifying information war, Ukraine has dominated the social media right from the first day of Russian invasion. Bureau Report, India Today.